Hello, the follow-up video from NZ ASCII and code page. In this video, with this video, you should understand what is Unicode, what is a code point, what is encoding, and what is UTF-8. The source of this video is written here and also in the video description. Okay, Unicode was the idea to uh, create like a rule to represent all characters on planet Earth like with numbers, basically like ASCII and ANSI, but for more. And Unicode says one character is represented by one number which kind of like sounds like ASCII and ANSI which is bad so we keep the concept but we don't call it number we call it a code point okay this is a code point and code point so is basically just another fancy word for the word number to give you an example the big letter A capital sorry the capital letter A is represented by 0041 in hexadecimal whoops which amounts to 65 to the number 65 in decimal just for reference okay basically it sounds like ASCII and ANSI but look at this these are at least two bytes right so now we have a very important question do we write that down in memory like this or do we write that down in memory like this or do we even say well uh, if there's a zero zero needing well we can actually like not write it at all so the question is how to represent this number in memory, how to write it down and this how to write it down has to be one word and this one word is encoding. So encoding says how to write it down or how to represent it in memory. And just as a side note, apparently these two ways of writing it down were like kind of the first ones that popped up, like which one do we take now? Um, the, the old big little Indian crisis and they came up with a very simple concept they said well in the, the first two bytes of a for example of a text file should tell you which encoding we're using FEFF -F. if it says FEFF -F, then we would have big endian and if it would say FFFE -F -F -E, then we have then we would have little endian with this way the computer would know which in which way to read this stuff right and well, that was so fine, and so far, so so fine, so far, right? But now we, we, we began to get some problems, right? The problem was that we had many, many zeros here, especially for English text, we had many, many zeros, which basically made all our documents like twice as big. And we had a different problem that like old programs thought that one character is one byte and zero, the zero byte would be the end of a string. That means that basically every string uh, would be interpreted as just one character which was like wrong and bad um, which apparently was also a reason why this Unicode stuff was ignored for such a long time because it wasn't just it just, just wasn't practical in, in this way right with this and this is the very important point with this encoding of Unicode with this encoding of Unicode Unicode was not practical okay the problem was not Unicode itself the problem was the encoding the way how to write it down and then people came up with a nice idea and they came up with UTF-8. And this is exactly what they did. They said, well, if there's 0, 0 leading, we can just skip that. And as far as I understand, I hope that's correct. They don't skip any zeros, but they skip every zero from 0 to 127. So the basic ASCII characters are represented in one byte. And that means that one byte was again, like before, one character. And that would mean, of course, just for this range, for only for this small range, but that would mean that all old documents, all old programs that were written, that would also work fine. And also, if you had a ASC, uh, an old ASCII document, that would automatically also be UTF-8 by default, which was also very convenient. And that's basically it for the most important part, maybe as a side note as well. Uh, not, no, let's make it like this. Side note, um, as far as I understand, UTF-8 can have up to six bytes for one character so it can be pretty long not must but can and also i want to mention that we of course also have different other encodings we for example have or we have the encoding iso 88 was 88591 and i also want to mention that apparently not all encodings can store all code points not all encodings can store all code points correctly okay so but 
But in the good thing is that UTF-8 apparently can store all call points correctly. That is no problem. As long as you're using UTF-8, you're good. And of course, we have many, many more encodings here. And again, uh, just to sum up everything, the concept is that in Unicode, one character is represented by a number, a so-called code point. And the big question is how to store this number. And this is, this is ex expressed as encoding. The encoding tells you how to store the number, which also says that without knowing the encoding, you cannot know how to read the, the memory, right? Without the encoding, you don't know if, if you should read it this way or if you should read it this way, right? Imagine you have two zeros here and, and two zeros here. Like, do, do you take this as one pack? Do you take this as one pack? Or do you even take this as one pack, right? You don't know. You definitely need the encoding to understand what content is inside the file. And this video is long enough, so I think I should finish here. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments or questions section. Thank you very much for watching.